<laughs> Ladies! And gentle bitches, welcome back. Welcome to the channel, HD Hayes. My name is... Troy. And today, folks, we are going to be reviewing the fifth studio album from the boys from down under, Five Seconds of Summer, aptly named Five Sauce Five. But before we get into it, let's take a moment to thank our sponsor for today's video, Surfshark VPN. So for the past few weeks, I've been on my honeymoon traversing the mountainside of Europe with my lovely bite-sized wife. And as we were paragliding through the beautiful Swiss Alps, you'd think that I would just be taking in all the beautiful nature, nothing else on my mind other than that blue ass water. But nay, I was more concerned about being able to watch my favorite Netflix shows while still in another country. But thankfully, with Surfshark VPN, that was never gonna be an issue. In case you haven't heard of them before, Surfshark is an app and browser extension that allows you to place your computer basically anywhere in the world so you can have access to the internet from that country. So not only does this let you access basically every single country's Netflix library, it also encrypts your online data for whenever you connect to public Wi-Fi's. Y'all, we used so many public Wi-Fi's while we were in France. I swear to God, I thought we were gonna get hacked. And to be completely honest with you, I kind of forgot that I had Surfshark VPN on my phone. So I was kind of stressing out about it, but hey, didn't need to because they had my back the entire time. And hey, if this is your first VPN and you're like, okay, finally, Mr. YouTube man, I will get a VPN, stop talking about it so much, and you're still a little skeptical, take it from me, use my promo code, HDHaze. You'll get 83% off, as well as three additional months for free. And if you don't like it and you don't end up using it, they got a 30 day money back guarantee, so no sweat. Thank you again to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back into the tunes. The album is clocking in at an hour and four minutes with the deluxe version. One hour, four minutes, one band, four members. Mainly produced by the boys themselves, but they did have some help in the writing and production department, starting off with Sarah Ahrens, Jason Evigan, Colin Britton, Peter Thomas, Jake Torrey, John Feldman, and lo and behold, <laughs> the Sultan of Swing. That's right, he's back in the radio. Johnny fucking Bowser. Let's take a look at this cover art really quick. It is giving... Last minute CVS pharmacy birthday cards for grandma? Bruh. I feel like I'm gonna open this card and it's gonna have like a horribly handwritten note. Happy birthday, Grammy. Can't believe you beat out a Queen Lizzie the second. How the fuck are you alive? Congrats, you bad bitch. But on a deeper, like more serious level, I think the silhouettes of the boys was a beautiful idea, having them be engulfed by this like red to blue, transitioning, growing, fluctuating against this pure white background. It's very aesthetically pleasing. Go ahead and do your boy a solid by liking and subscribing. Check out the Patreon, linked in the description. Starts off at five bucks. It's the best way to support the channel. You get exclusive access to our Discord, as well as a bunch of videos that I legally cannot put out on YouTube, like the one night only performance at the Royal Albert Hall that the boys just did. Yes, we'll be watching that on Patreon. Hope to see you there. The first track on this album is Complete mess. We have heard this single before, but we're gonna just jam out again because it is a phenomenal tune that starts off with this beautiful little bass line by our very own Callum Hood. Oh, utilizing those low and high strings to kind of create a chord. And I never The snapping is actually Callum too. He's really, really impressive. He's doing that with his toes. Honestly, it's just a very impressive feat. Oh, Here we go! What? You make me what? Come! Just, just come. You make me come! 
Dude, the band stops. I cannot get enough of. It makes you feel like they're right there in front of you playing this shit out of these songs. Just Oh, and then we get this nice little electronic texture. Dude, all through this album, I love the electronic synth department. Ooh, this filter coming in. The pulsating filter transition into the second chorus gets my blood pumping, dude. Yeah, it's popped off. The guitar is so low. Bro, get up that neck! Get it! Get up that neck! Some serious pen game in this tune, dude. First verse starts off as caught up in heaven, but your heaven ain't the same. And I've never been a saint, have I? Oh no, no, you naughty, naughty boy. This evanescence, always fleeting like a flame. But I'm never one to change, am I? What? Dude, Evanescence? Wake me up! Wake me up! I can't wake up! Also, Callum on verse 2 says, I ask no questions as your colors take their hold, as my darkness turns to gold. Yo! Well, somebody... Please come get the young Aristotle giving us some beautiful Greek elemental type of lyricism over here. Dude, so sick. Moving on to the next track, we have Easy For You To Say, and I gotta, I gotta say, it is insane that they put this song as number two. The only problem I have with this song is really the fact that the melody and the verse never changes, which gets kind of old. I see it in moments, it's coming in ways. A sunrise in Sydney that's burning for days. Every tomorrow keeps turning the page. See, then change, right? I was stolen and filled with mistakes. I turned all the round, look for someone to blame. Last night, I lied. Ooh, then this pre-course comes in. Sweeping you up a little bit into this different melody. Rising, then where? Oh, with those kicks coming in. Oh. Ooh. There's that switch up. Ooh, and then that guitar comes in. Come on. It's so good. I really love this chorus, dude. It feels like kind of like a little EDM moment. You get those long, high belting notes, and then right as the C section of that chorus comes, you get a little split up. Boop, 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 boop. Oh, and then you get right back into yeah. It's really, it's a really good chorus. And then we get back into the second chorus with these kick drums, and maybe it's just me, but whenever I hear a kick drum pattern that's like four on the floor during a verse, it just gives me like Mumford and Sons PTSD. Between all the gasping, I finally breathe. And then on top of that, the melody for the verse doesn't really change at all, which is kind of a bummer. But you know what's not a bummer? Hi hats. And that's another snare fill. Just two notes. That's all you need. Oh, I'm getting sturdy to this shit, bro. And then this acoustic comes in, right? Yo. You think it's building back up to that same chorus, right? Well, guess what? No, no. It's a drop chorus. What? This is my favorite part. Listen. Woo! They 
change those post chords. Oh my God, that's the, that's the second song. Gathering my bussy up off the floor and moving into the next tune, we have Bad Omens. This one starts off with a really cool synth texture. And then whatever that white noise is, it's just a cool intro. So this is where I am. Back with that four on the floor kick. What's up, dude? How you doing? You gonna hit me with a great pre-chorus? Oh, yes, he does. It's just climbing so perfectly. Ooh. Oh, the oh, the screaming, bro. Breaking it up. Oh, and then that little riff. I love that they put that little riffage right in between the chorus and that second verse. It just gives it such a nice little space to exist. I cannot stress enough how important vowels are when it comes to like long yells or screams or just notes in general. Play a huge part in singability. You know, it wouldn't sound as satisfying if he goes, that's not. Mm, nah. Ah. Oh, it's just the cherry on top of that little ice cream sundae of a chorus. Now there's a really nice synth bass moment right before that last chorus that I wanna shine some light on. Oh, the growling bass feels so good. And then Ashley coming in with that ride. Come on! And game! These little melodies here. Oh, and the choir! How could I forget about the choir? Ooh, finishing with that little synth texture just like how we started, baby. It's such a nice song. Honestly, it kind of reminds me some of the melodies in there of like, early Ed Sheeran almost. Also, this song is about seeing past your partner's bad omens or red flags. And I just really like that as a concept for a song. I feel like nowadays on Twitter or TikTok, people see like red flags as like a completely ill suitable partner. Like it could be anything, dude. Like it's ridiculous. If he lives with his mom, it's a red flag. Beware, ladies. If her body count is over four, it's a red flag, boys. You don't want any of that. Like, dude, that shit is so stupid. Now, I'm not saying to go back to your ex who listens to Andrew Tate on repeat 24-7. That's a different kind of red flag, okay? I'm talking about, like, the small, like, parade float red flags, not the fucking Iwo Jima. <sighs> massive red flag as that man is. <laughs> Moving on into the next tune, we have another absolutely rock solid single produced and written by, oh yeah, that's right, Johnny Frickin' Bells, baby. Me, myself, and I. This is like a borderline perfect song to me. So... Oh, that guitar chokes! Choke me! Oh! The rising... Oh, melody, come on! Come on! Oh! Oh my God, I'll tell you what I needed. I needed those drums in my veins, dude.
Like, are you serious, dude? Is that not like the most cold play, satisfying ass post chorus I've ever heard from these boys? Come on, Luke! Yeah, like I said, borderline perfect song. Currently fighting for the number one spot on my favorites for this album, or at least out of the singles. But we're gonna get to that one by moving on to the next song, which is Take My Hand, the Joshua Tree version. Now, I haven't really found too many differences between this one and the official release, just kind of like an outro that kind of goes on a little uh, filter journey. But if I'm being honest with you, this isn't like my favorite song on the album. It's kind of giving me like youth pastor vibes, Hillsong rejected record energy. There are like a few kind of cool moments with like the vocoders and that kind of stuff in here. It's another four on the floor kick pattern that is kind of getting a little old, reaching four or five songs into the album. I, I was kind of hoping to have like a little bit more variety as we get a little through it. Maybe we will with Carousel. Actually, I already know that we won't because apparently they changed the beat on Carousel from whatever it was to this four on the floor pattern Again, okay. I would love to hear the original version, to be honest with you. Also, these keys in the beginning are kind of giving like a Phoenix type energy vibe. I don't know if any of you guys even know who Phoenix is, but it kind of sounds similar to what they were doing way back in like 2010, 2011. So he's jumping into that falsetto again, which is pretty nice. So I think the drums really save the chorus of this song. They come in real thick and heavy, just the way I like them. Another solid part of this song that I do enjoy though is the instrumental breakdown. Woo! And then you get that guitar bend. Leading into this outro, very soothing, very calm. Changes a lot of the dynamic feel from the rest of the tune. Oh, I like the little melody change. And then my favorite part of the whole song. Sound familiar? That's the YouTube premiering music. Like when I premiered this video, as you might have been waiting for it to drop, that little drum beat is so similar. Like, listen. For a song about feeling like your life is going around in circles, I kind of feel like the verses and the choruses are kind of repeating in a way that feels like you're going around in circles. So maybe that was the desired effect. Moving right along into potentially the saddest song on the record featuring Sierra Deaton, who I believe is Luke Hemmings' fiance. Very cute. It sounds so sonically different than every track on the album. It almost feels like we went back in time to like the 50s and just wrote this like tragic 50s piano ballad duet between two ex-lovers or two lovers. Like it's, it's beautiful, man. I don't wanna get old. get older Toby Stare at the photograph. I love that the vocals aren't like perfectly synced it kind of feels like they're sitting next to each other playing the song and singing at the same time I, oh, I just love it it's a beautiful little duet also the pen game is absolutely gorgeous in this song listen oh, every time you twist my lips my dear,
Every time you twist my lips, dear, devoted, delicate. Okay, come on. That's literally just a JoJo's Stan name. <laughs> You're approaching me. Dear, devoted, delicate. I mean, come on, dude. It's so good. And who else? Just you. Oh, very nice. I love all the little squeaks and foley sounds in it too. It sounds like they're playing it on an old ass piano. It just, every single aspect of the song fits the atmosphere and the aesthetic so well and so perfectly. It's a gorgeous tune. I think the addition of the seventh chord is also kind of, <laughs> just pulls a guitar out of nowhere. <laughs> No, but seriously, it is the seventh chords that make the progression feel so old school and feel so like unresolved, kind of jazzy in a way. They go from this beautiful C major seven. I don't wanna get older when you're on my shoulder. Into that E minor. With that A minor seven. And that D seven, that D seven is so beautiful. That wasn't very beautiful. It's a great progression. That's all I'm trying to say. And I know that this song is all about, you know, not wanting to grow older without your significant other by your side. But I'll tell you the truth, man. I don't want to get older in general. If and when I find the fountain of youth, you bet your ass I am Olympic diving into that bitch. And all you guys are going to be like, yo, what are you doing? You're literally a baby now. How are you supposed to do videos, bruh? And I'm gonna pop out that water like, goo goo ga ga, bitch. Well, let's get back into it. <laughs> now, the next tune, it's entitled Haze. I'm, I'm just honored. Okay, don't, don't take this away from me, okay? It's dedicated to me, it's designed for me. Why would they make it so good if it wasn't for me? I put on the soap, I put on the tie. Ooh, he's getting spiffy for me. Thank you. Oh, he's never gonna die like me! Oh, the little falsetto flips, come on. Oh, you're gonna see a lot more than my face, bro. Ooh, the little hi-hat! Why would they put the tambourine in there if it wasn't for me? Huh? The other part that I'm just obsessed with is the flow in the second verse and how it's different from the first verse. Just check it out. When I moved to California, Ooh. when I lived between the bars, when I didn't even know you, I was given up. Bars. I sure was a ghost town. The city broke my heart. Oh. I watched the weeks fly by. I'm not myself when you're not there. Oh, this little synth up top too. And this little bass moment. Come on. Dude, the pen game in having that starting chorus lyric be feeling all right and I'm, it makes me feel all right. It makes me feel more than all right, but I'm not gonna get like overtly horny right now because also, do you want a piece of my mind? I can have myself lobotomized and I can give you each a little squishy piece. That's the least I can do to have a song dedicated to me on the album. It's getting hot in here. Why don't we take it down a notch with uh, You Don't Go To Parties? This tune isn't really one of my faves either. It kind of feels like a little bit too simplistic. There's just not a whole lot of like stuff to really like gravitate to other than maybe like the rhythm section that kind of pops off a little bit in the verses. Race horse tripping on the dirt that you got on me. We go stupid every night, what a tragedy. We go stupid every night, what a tragedy. See, that just reminds me of that one meme of like the guy partying in the corner and they're like, they don't know I'm going stupid right now. And everybody's like, we know you're going stupid right now. <laughs> Again, I think the best part of this song comes from the instrumental break. It's 
fun. It's just not like my favorite on the record. But moving on into, I mean, honestly, who are we kidding? It's the best single, okay? Blender. Not only did this song absolutely blend my emotions, but it blended my ass, okay? The bass line itself is so groovy. Is it just the way we are? And these pre-chorus hits, come on! I die for you, I die for you, I die for you, for you. I tried Ooh. for you, I tried for you, I tried for you. And all I did is all the things you said in my head Ricocheted off the bed, nothing left for the mess We got it never ends, now we're stressed and depressed And we're going around again And the motion of blender All the things you said in my head Ricocheted off the bed, nothing left for the mess We got it never ends, now we're stressed and depressed And we're going around again And the motion of blender Woo! Come on with that pre-chorus, post-chorus jam! The saxophone. All the things I said in my head, pushing out the bed, but then left for the mess. So I thought it never ends. Now I'm stressed and depressed, and we're going on again. And an emotional bender. Oh, I'm going on another kind of bender, brother. Let me tell you, holy shit, that song is incredible. <laughs> Shout out. Peter Thomas and Jake Torrey for producing that one. That was the first time the boys were even working with those lads. Congrats. I feel like this song is like a perfect evolution of the kind of singles that they've been releasing through their discography, like a proper Pokemon evolution in three tiers. First, you have the starter, cute, adorable. She looks so perfect. Oh, it's just, it's just so nice. It gets you excited, it gets you hyped for the band. And then you get the second evolution, Youngblood. And for a lot of Pokemon, that's kind of where the cool factor like drops off. I feel like recently they've kind of been like dropping the ball on the third evolution. They've just going for like humanoid. I'm not trying to be bricked up while watching Pokemon, okay? I'm trying to fight with these motherfuckers. But that third evolution would be Blender. And this song does definitely does get me horny, so. But next on our track list, we have Caramel. Caramile. Caramile? Caramel? Caramo? Anyways, this song starts off with a little bit of riffage. Another thing I've noticed is they really like to have pre-choruses that utilize three chords. Because usually with the verses and the choruses, they're doing four chords, right? But when they break it up, it kind of changes that feeling in your ear. So it's kind of different, leads you into that chorus really nicely. I love how in the chorus he gets high at first and then coming back down with these melodies, he goes even higher. Like I'm starting to feel like Luke hitting this falsetto is like a cheat code, dude. Oh, but the post-chorus, oh my Lord, this is the best part of this, of, of Caramel. Oh, it's so chunky. I can see people in the pit going crazy already for this song, dude. It's honestly, I can see this one being slept on heavily. It's just a really groovy tune and it acts as a nice little buffer between the craziness of like pretty much all the singles we've heard so far leading in to the back half of this album for the songs that we haven't heard. Speaking of those songs, the next one up is Best Friends. He my best friend. He a real bad bitch, gotta own money. <laughs> Next time you go on the BBC Live Lounge, just think about it. Best friends, five seconds of summer cover, I don't know. This one does kind of start a little abruptly. It catches me a little off guard. See what I mean? I don't recognize the instrument that starts off this song. It might be like a little shitty like MIDI keyboard or something like that, but it's definitely giving like a very interesting pulsating Rhythm. I feel 
like this chorus could have been more, honestly. It's it's kind of walking that tightrope <laughs> line between really great catchy to like slightly annoying. I feel like it's just the melody. The lyrics are fine. I, I actually like the lyrics the most. It kind of makes me feel like I'm in a car with all my friends jamming out. But the melodies do get a little repetitive and not in a good way. Now, what is cool is the fact that they do change these bridge chords into something that is so much more dynamic and attractive to my ears. It's just a great chord change. It evokes this feeling of just rising. Come on, Ashton! The ending is honestly the best part, and I love the energy that they bring to it. It just makes it such a oh, cathartic release. Moving right along into the next tune is Bleach. Oh, okay. Is Five Sauce trying to hype up the fact that Bleach is airing again in 2022? Dude, I'm about to Bankai all over you bitches when this shit drops, trust me. So this song starts off with a little bit of atmospheric Textures kind of reminding me of a little bit of Jeremy Zucker like old-school Zucky boy you guys know how much I love him and then leading into yet another very cool guitar riff I'm floating Literally floating above the earth. Well, I do have room for you now, Luke, now that I've lobotomized myself. I also enjoy the whispering in this verse. It's such a nice, calming moment. God, the percussion sound choices are so good. You'll never hear uh, the same drums through the whole album. Oh my God, dude, I'm sorry, but his falsetto is seriously a cheat code. I know I said it before, but it really is, dude. He could literally just pop into that bitch in any course, and I'm like, heater. It's a heater! Oh my God. Bleaching your hair every Saturday? Oh my God. Brother, you are destroying your follicles. You don't wanna be channeling Steve Harvey by your 30s. That's not the goal. A luscious head of salad should be your goal, okay? <laughs> Callum coming in with that second verse. Michael. I know it takes time to let go, but Michael, my boy, with a little bit of vocoding action, love me some vocoded backing vocals. Okay, sorry, I gotta say, the living without you kind of does remind me of Without You by David Guetta featuring Usher. Like, tell me, tell me that doesn't fit perfectly into that song. Living without you without you Please, somebody get on that remix, mashup, whatever you want to call it. I need to hear it. Ooh, those last vocals coming in a little strong, not really matching with the rest of the chorus. I do kind of like it though. This was another one that they wrote with Sarah Ahrens, which is pretty cool. And apparently the song started off with Michael playing this riff that he titled, in all caps, Good Midi Thing. Midi is the name of the instrumentation kind of language that Dawes used to make. Which is dope because that means that Michael's probably the one who's been making all of these electronic and synth choices, which I've loved through the whole album, dude. And apparently this was also a potential jingle pitch for Clorox. 
<laughs> okay, boys, gonna have to write you a citation for that one. You can't be funnier than me on my YouTube channel. That's illegal. You're breaking the rules. Moving right along into the next song, <laughs> and yet another potential anime reference with Red Line. Are they talking about the Red Line from One Piece? Probably not. No, they're talking about the Red Line in London, which is like the train system, I believe, that all the boys used to hop onto, go into studio sessions way back when they made the band, which is super nostalgic. It starts off with another beautiful little high guitar riff from most likely our boy, Michael. I'm loving the Michael appreciation on this album. I, I really do feel it. Then we get into this outro, and let me tell you, it is so weird, and I love every second of it. Oh, these keys. Ooh, a little change. And then resolve. The doors of the train closing. Are you serious, dude? Are you kidding me? I love me some Foley sounds to close an album and a door closing is literally one of like the top tier sounds, dude. Well, folks, that's gonna be it for the album. And I honestly really enjoyed it. I think I like the front half a bit more than the back. Big fan of the electronic elements in this record. I feel like it grounds the band in this like modern sound that can feel larger than life at times, but also feels like the boys are still making songs in their bedrooms or in their friends' houses. It's like a happy medium. Also, another happy medium between their songwriting of this like really catchy pop melodies mixed in with this like progressive rock. So much more interesting to listen to. I feel like I can go back to each of these songs and pick out a different riff that I didn't hear before. Did you like it, Toby? I think Toby liked it too. He wanted to come in here and say that he is also a fan of the sauce. But that's gonna be a wrap for your boy. Thanks for tuning in. We're going live on Twitch like right now to listen to the five extra songs on the deluxe version. So if you don't wanna miss that, head over there. It'll probably be on my second channel if you did miss it. So go over to there and freaking subscribe while you're at it. But if you wanna keep the party going, there's two videos on screen right now. And as always, stay happy, healthy, and strong. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.